The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. This video is intended to describe some of the key features of the Lean Enterprise Value Lean Healthcare Clinic Simulation. A video can't substitute for the experience of attending an intense learning simulation such as this one, and we won't attempt to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is describe what the students experience during the day, cover at least some of the lessons of what they learn, and for those of you that are interested in simulation-based education, describe some of the features of the learning simulation. The simulation itself and this video are broken into three pieces, three modules. One is the learning of the simulation itself that's accompanied by some background information in how Lean applies to healthcare and some simple tools for getting local processes under control. The second is a structured improvement using value stream mapping, capacity calculation, and a planned improvement method to improve the local processes at each clinic to make them at least functional. And the third attacks problems that uh, cannot be handled at the individual clinics. And in this exercise, the uh, entire group of students participates in a simulated rapid process improvement workshop where they break down into functional teams and do a complete re-engineering of the clinic process across the whole room with cooperation between clinics in order to solve some problems that are unsolvable at the local level and also create a overall very high performing clinic environment. Basically what you are in, in our simulated world is a group of outpatient clinics. Um, we have an old process that is not very good. There's high variation in workload, in the, in the processes. Um, the overall performance is pretty poor. We're going to actually let you experience that. You're going you're to play with it. Um, you know, maybe for a little while you'll be, you'll, you'll, be, uh, you'll be learning how to do it, but it's not that complicated. You should be able to learn your own jobs pretty quickly, and then, but then you will find that it still doesn't work very well because the system itself is set up um, not very well. At that point, uh, the simulation, once you've learned it, becomes a practice field for applying lean techniques. What can we do to make this process better? This is what we're going to do. We're going to have basically three segments. The segments will have one or two rounds of play each. Um, we're going to first learn the simulation. That's what we're doing right now. We're going to apply lean locally at each of your tables. You will strategize and apply some lean interventions to make your uh, individual clinic work better. And then we're going to do another round where we start thinking about, well, there's only so much one can do locally. What are some of the things that we can do by coordinating across our whole healthcare enterprise by expanding our vision of the value stream beyond just the one uh, clinic uh, so that the whole room can work together to make a more efficient system that, for example, shares resources or uh, redirects uh, patients to places that are better able to uh, take care of them. What we're going to do in this module is, is, first of all, just learn how to play the simulation because the, the idea that we would like you to get is to think about this as a process that mirrors, perhaps does not exactly simulate, but mirrors the kind of process that you'd see in, in a clinic or ER where, um, where a patient is flowing through the system and we're trying to get that patient value stream to be lean. Um, so we're going to learn simulation. We're going to experience the frustrations of a not very good uh, process and apply a couple simple lean tools to try to get it to at least perform at a, at a minimum level. Key thing right now, though, is to kind of wrap your brain around the sim so that we can stop thinking about it. Because later in the day, what we would like to do is think about this as a process and apply lean tools and analyses to it so that the, the game, as it were, uh, sort of fades into the background and we worry more about the, the realities of the, of the tools and uh, using them to improve the process that's embodied in the simulation. The rules are very straightforward, and in fact, they are pretty much in front of you. If everyone has a mat in front of them that says process, and if you just read that and execute those actions faithfully, you'll be fine. Um, it's important that you do that because that's the basis for future improvements. 
if you don't understand the process, it's going to be difficult to improve it. So round one and the minute is, is the time. You will now be referring to this rather than making those times up. Um, you have 12 minutes to get things done. If you are not done in 12 minutes, you can no longer process, you can no longer register any new patients, but you have three minutes of overtime to finish the existing patients. And I will reset the clock at that time. Um, and then we'll count up to three minutes. So ready and go. This montage will illustrate some of the features of the simulation. Oh, it's a long one. The simulation involves a processing of little Lego people, little Lego patients, through a simulated clinic with uh, various functions such as registration, triage, uh, examination, diagnosis, uh, and discharge. The uh, simulation has a fair amount of paperwork. A lot of it is uh, a little frustrating, a little bit redundant. Some of it is unnecessarily complicated, although the paperwork does have important information that affects the flow of the uh, patients and their treatment. Timers are used to represent the capacity of the system so it doesn't turn into a race to get things done, although physical dexterity is sometimes required. There are a lot of manual steps, but the basic processes uh, are represented by the timers, and those are ultimately the constraints on the system. That allows the students to focus ultimately on the process itself rather than the details. The variation in the system is represented a couple different ways. One is by the uh, patient himself, the little Lego patient, has uh, different colors of head, body, and legs that affect the, uh, the diagnosis. This is the each patient is different phenomena. Um, the actual process variation is represented by dice uh, that, require, that create an unpredictable uh, source of variation at each station. And these can affect both the time it takes to process the individual patient and in some cases, in the case of diagnosis, the dice can indicate whether a test is failed or passed or whether the machine fails to perform and the test has to be done over. The uh, patients sometimes have to leave the table and go to a, a little Lego hospital. So there are some externalities um, to the system. Sometimes the, uh, the clinic cannot handle a given patient. There are other times when... Uh, Patients don't have to go to the hospital, but nevertheless, due to lack of either capacity or the correct equipment, they can't be treated at the clinic, and therefore the, the clinic effectively fails to treat the patient. These are things that are eventually dealt with in the last round of the simulation. As the first round or two go on, the, the students do learn to master their own processes, but it's still remains a little bit confusing. The process is not a very good one. And uh, so, but the students get past the simulation rules and start thinking about what is wrong with this process. What's the overall flow? And what is the purpose of the paperwork? And uh, what are the sources of variation? And how can we make this process better? Okay, regular time is done. We are starting overtime, three minutes. No new patients may be registered. The simulation uses overtime basically to clear patients off the table so that it's not a continuing state simulation. Failed test. No yellow timer. It's like the black hole where the patient Basically, the, the clinic closes okay, down for the that's night. It. Uh, this allows uh, a completion of the metrics for each day. Um, okay, so if there's any patients still out on the floor, they're going to be recorded as untreated. And also makes it uh, simpler to execute the, the simulation. You don't have patients that are mysteriously trapped in the clinic finished overnight. Patients and any unfinished paperwork to that person to, uh, to just put away, that'd be good. We're going to clear the table. And what we'd like you to do is put patients and errors, that's untreated patients, not hospitals okay, but untreated patients or patients that were treated incorrectly. We can use visual control. Anybody who's been in a hospital has seen these kind of uh, scheduling boards. Students now use visual controls and intuitive small improvements and standardizations in their process to make it perform a little bit better at least, to make it perform uh, not quite so chaotically. All righty, round two, go. And try the process again. Typically, improvements are noticeable, but small. 
And at the end of this process, students are encouraged to share their various ideas with the larger group. Uh, let's total up our statistics, put them up. So that they can take some ownership of it, so that the larger group can see the variety of different improvement ideas that people can come up with uh, just sort of creatively in the first improvement attempt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We did the same thing, and we actually used uh, sticky labels. Oh, I did the similar kind of thing. Oh, nice. MD, lab, triage. In the second module of the simulation experience, the students receive some lecture material and then embark on a major exercise. The process is analyzed using value stream mapping, some Gemba visits where people look at how the process works in detail on the table, and also they do some analysis uh, using capacity calculations and other calculations to try to understand the capacity and other features of the simulation quantitatively. They then go through a structured improvement process where ideas are brainstormed, costs are figured out, and an improvement approach is agreed okay, upon. it is round three. Let's go. These improvements are done at the single table level, the single clinic level. So, Tom, the next Registration, patient. we have a new patient. Can you take that patient for registration? No interaction between the clinics uh, is done at this time. So the attempt is to locally optimize the process. With the new process, the tables are quieter, calmer. The work seems to be proceeding in a little bit more of an organized way. There's even uh, time for the students to improve their process and organize their workspace while the work is going on. Discharge for me. Nobody clogged on discharge. The result is almost always better performance. All right. That's it. Although there is significant variation by table, and not every uh, clinic shows improvement in their process uh, based on the ideas that they implemented. Successfully treated. Six here, three there. So we had the problem with the at the doctor getting worse, and that was that was an external condition, right? You just got more gray patients, right? You guys kind of had bad luck. More, more bad rolls on the on the um, uh, on the diagnostics. You folks, things clicked, right? The process change worked. Your luck was reasonable. Things clicked. All right, everybody, ready? It seems very quiet. I think we're ready. Let's go. To stabilize the new process and collect a little bit more information on its performance, the simulation is run again using the new process. Typically, performance is good or better than the previous round. However, the performance varies by table still, and the students observe that there's high variation and factors beyond their control, which are still limiting their performance to a level lower than they would like. They didn't ultimately have success in this round. They, they have identified a shifted constraint. These guys are definitely getting better, and same thing, right? Shift, they've, they've identified the same problem. You guys, everything was going great. Is there anything, if I asked you to do 10, what, what would be the problem? Oh, okay, so there was a bottleneck at the discharge at the end there, okay. We had a lot of bad luck in our failed tests. In failed tests, okay. Bad luck, everybody had bad luck. What does that tell you? Yep, it's the new normal, right. So we're going to do a mock RPW to uh, make this work. Here is our electronic records. We don't have to do the paperwork anymore, that's good. Let's set up some cross-functional teams. First of all, let's figure out what our plan is, okay? And there's your team, so go to it. The challenge in the final round of the simulation is to succeed in only one round of play. There isn't a second round to stabilize the, the new process. This requires the students to focus on the process. It's designed to do a good job, but it must be executed carefully and successfully in order for the students to have good performance in the first round after implementing a lot of changes. Visual controls and constant communication assure success. This patient is our team. Black. Yeah. Our team. Um, Tom. 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 This goes to. to uh, thank you. Thank you very much. 70s back. Yes, thank you.
Seven is back, seven is good, seven is discharged. Seven is charging you. Here we go. This one goes to you. Okay. Here we go. Six minutes. And that's going to have to fill in just the black. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah, right. The last patient is winding their way through the uh, through the otherwise empty clinic, right? Yeah. It's gone from being a mob scene to being like this one person. The thing that worked really well was the fact that you, know, you, had, you had this simple system. There was a lot of yelling, but everyone could see what was going on, right? And everyone was communicating. They're like, is they're finished, they're finished, hello. But, but the information got transferred. I thought that was key. And the other thing is the diagnostician team did a super job of both figuring out how to optimize that system, good job, diagnostic. final discussion and highlights what works about the new process, and also, in the spirit of continuous improvement, mentions what could be improved if the simulation was to keep going. In the context going. of the mock RPIW, this is what would happen in the week. You would get to the end of the week with your new system tested. Yeah. It's not yet ready for full-scale implementation. You're going to have to refine it. You know, get the training it's ready. Probably going to be pretty ragged. But, but yeah. at the end of the week, you would have gotten a whole new system developed and tested to this stage, and and that's what you did. So that's why we do it. About, like a and it's about this frantic for a week. Yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah. 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 That is why you need to test your implementation. This thing yeah. we're spending yeah. half a year planning the perfect solution. It does not work because you can't anticipate those things. So you launch. You look at what doesn't work, and you fix it, you relaunch, and that's how you just run through the cycles. Yeah, the so forget, cycles. Yeah. forget your, your healthcare upbringing with, let's study this for half a year or a full year. Let's spend another half a year designing the perfect solution and then evaluate after another year. That's not a good way of doing it. Do it this way.